בשם השם נעשה ונצליח, שיעור תורה, ברוכים הבאים, we're back to our Wednesday night, סתם את הרבי, where after a few דברי תורה, you guys will בעזרת השם ask some questions, הקדוש ברוך הוא בעזרת השם will give us the answers. Tonight's שיעור will be for a רפואה שלמה for רבנית לבנה, בת שרה, אבי מורי דוד בן עשריה, דוריס בת ג'ורה, רב אפרים בן שולמית, רבנית שרה בת ענת, אורית בת אילנה, ליאורה בת ליאל, עזרא בן בתיה, and also for הצלחה רבה, מרשה בת ג'וליה, איילה בת מרשה, סמל בן מרשה, ספס בן מרשה, אלכסנדר בן מרשה, לואיס בן מרשה, שאול בן פרזני, יתרו בן אברהם, אושרי בן דוריס, גיא בן דוריס, אלעד בן דוריס, אמיר בן שאהין, and all of Am Yisrael and all of the righteous Noahides that continue to do whatever is necessary to do the will of Hashem. Ashrechem v'ashrechet kechem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yivarechet Kulchem, Bekol Mikol Kol. So, we have uh, in front of us Parashat Truma, Vayikhuli Truma. We have a uh, parasha that uh, more or less, when you first look at it, you're trying to figure out how is this parasha relevant to my life. I understand it's part of the Torah. I understand we need to uh, build the Bet HaMikdash. Uh, I understand we need to do a lot of different things, but what about me? How uh, I'm not building the Bet HaMikdash. I'm not building the Mishkan. How could I take something from this parasha? So, of course, uh, the uh, anyone that read uh, Rabbi Ephraim's book, uh, the... Um, Asicha Shavuit, he has uh, several ideas uh, on every single parasha in the Torah for anyone that uh, knows how to speak Hebrew and uh, should definitely order these books from the website. It's free. Go to kiruvstore.com or .org, uh, kiruvstore.org, and get yourself a, a set of these. You can give out and do chesed la'am Yisrael to give them uh, some uh, books for free. Um, so he has a bunch of ideas over there. And... Uh, uh, of course, one of the things that a person needs to understand is that the Torah is an endless ocean. And there's uh, something to learn from every single pasuk in the Torah, every aspect of it. Every parasha has prophecy. Every parasha has secrets that are relevant, not only relevant to you, but relevant to you now, right this second, this week. And when you read the parasha, uh, uh, one of the Mekubalim, I heard this uh, First hand from uh, Arav Shani, who is a, uh, one of the Mekubalim of this generation. He says that when you read the weekly parasha and you fulfill the mitzvah uh, and the obligation uh, that the Shulchan Aruch Paskins, that every Jew has to read the w- weekly parasha twice and once with commentary, preferably commentary by Onkelos. Uh, but uh, if you don't have Onkelos, you could read the, uh, the Rashi, and that's, uh, that's uh, more than enough. Uh, but nonetheless, when you, uh, Rav Shani says that when you read the weekly parasha, you're in essence creating specific angels that will give you certain strength uh, for that week that you can't get and in your life that you can't get any other way. Uh, there's an extraordinary amount of kedusha that uh, is generated from reading the weekly parasha and that's why we mention it on a regular basis because I know that there's a lot of people, Baruch Hashem, that watch our shiurim, that have done tshuva, that are bachurim in yeshivot and kolels and so on, uh, and are very good at learning Gemara or learning Musar or learning a lot of different things, but for whatever reason or another, uh, put the Chumash, the five books of Moses, on the, uh, on the back as the, uh, you know, when I get a chance type of uh, uh, ideology, and it's uh, really nothing further from the truth. Uh, in fact, it's more of an obligation uh, to learn the weekly uh, parasha than it is to learn anything else. Anything else. Because this is a psak halacha. You have to learn. Of course, you also have to learn, as we read uh, in last night's shiur, the Mishnah Burai and the Shulchan Aruch Paskins, that a person has to learn Musar every day. And of course, you have to learn halacha, because how are you going to uh, uh, know how to apply the Musar if you don't learn halacha? So of course, you have to learn everything. But here, to, to, for a person to not learn the weekly parasha is, in essence, a person that will never achieve any sense whatsoever of where he came from, where she came from, and where they're going. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's critical for a person to learn uh, the weekly parasha. Of course, the obligation is on men. Uh, you know, women 
are not obligated to learn the weekly parasha, although it's definitely very good, but they don't have that same obligation. But uh, I would say women that have, uh, you know, that are single or uh, women that have less responsibility, more time on their hands, instead of chit-chatting a bunch of Lashon Ara on the telephone and going to coffee shops, surely it's much better for you to w- read the weekly parasha and know where you came from. Uh, the uh, One of the uh, uh, very uh, uh, successful zgulot uh, that's already from yesteryear, it's from many, many years ago, but was, uh, you know, had a rebirth in our generation uh, by Arav uh, Yeshayahu uh, Pinto, Sheikh a Gaon Tzadik of this generation. Uh, I remember when I first uh, uh, started uh, going, uh, you know, doing tshuva, I used to go to a shurim every Tuesday night. And uh, so Arav Pinto gave a rebirth to a very famous sgula to learn Sefer Dvarim, the book of Deuteronomy, the entire book on Shabbat. And many people have taken it on to learn this uh, Sefer. Why Sefer Dvarim? This is the Sefer of Moshe Rabbeinu. It has a lot of uh, Musar in it, a lot of Kedusha in it. Uh, but again, even this Gula, uh, there I hear that there are certain people that take on this Gula and they read the book of Deuteronomy, Sefer Dvarim, on Shabbat, and sometimes they read it in sections during the week, and that's all great. And it could definitely uh, be an addition and a benefit to your life, but it is not as important as reading the weekly parasha. Uh, as great as uh, reading Sefer Dvarim is, it's not as important. It's not an obligation. It's a sgula. Obligation is what comes first. And a person is obligated to learn the weekly parasha. And as I said, the Mekubalim specifically say that when a person reads the weekly parasha, really delves into it, not just reads it superficially just to get finished. Read the commentary. Know what's going on. Connect to it. Try to figure out who's 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 talking who what where and how how you know all these different things toil in it and toil in it because everything is in it says the mishnah and avot and a person such as this will uh, will end up having a, a lot of chidushim and of course have an opportunity to potentially become a talmit chacham one day because there is no such thing as a talmit chacham who does not know chumash no such thing so uh the that reality does not exist so the uh, parashat truma although it talks about the mishkan and all of the different intricate details of building the mishkan building the uh, the menorah and all the kelim and everything else surely it has an enormous amount of teachings in it that we can have as rav uh, uh, ephraim brings uh, first and foremost is the popular teaching where it says li truma, and they take for me a uh, uh, a, uh, a a portion they take from me i mean usually you would say they would give and when you give you know when you when it, when the issue is uh it's daka you give tzedaka you don't take tzedaka no no when you give tzedaka you're really taking tzedaka why because anyone that understands even the basic minimum requirement of what it means to believe in God knows that no matter what you do, Akadosh Baruch Hu poteach et yadav masbiya bekol charatzon. Akadosh Baruch Hu opens his hands and feeds all of those that are uh, that uh, that want life, that need life. Hashem feeds all of his creation. So the whether you give somebody that needs the uh, money or you don't give it to them akadosh baruch Hu doesn't need you in essence when we give we're taking and that's what we're doing is that since hashem is going to give this person this animal this uh this entity whatever it needs uh, based on of course akadosh baruch Hu's calculations when we decide to donate money when we decide to donate our time when we decide to donate our uh, our skills or anything else that we decide to to to, to give in essence what we're telling a kadosh baruch Hu is that we want you to use us as the vessel that is going to that you're going to give to this uh, person by that's an aspect i know you're going to give this person food or money or whatever it is with or without me you don't need me to run the world you don't need anything and anyone that has still uh, doubts or confusions about whether a Kadosh Baruch Hu needs something or not, as I said last night, another reminder, read the commentary by the Rambam on Perek Chelek, a commentary on the Mishnah. Uh, and Perek Chelek, it's uh, right before he uh, goes in there, the whole elaborate 
well-known section that he uh, talks about how there is different types of heretics that think that God needs something. But the point being is, is that when a person gives, gives money for Kiruv, gives money to a Kolel, gives money for the sake of Torah, that person is in essence taking. Why are they taking? I understand Hashem is, you know, is, uh, is, uh, is going to give one way or the other, and I'm asking Hashem to use me. I'm giving. I'm, I'm going to donate a few dollars uh, to, uh, uh, for the sake of Torah. So I want to be the vessel. But how is that taking really? Because when you decide that you want to be the vessel, then in essence, what are you doing? You're taking a merit for yourself. You're guaranteeing yourself one thing. You're guaranteeing yourself that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to reward you. When you give to the right place, you give for the right cause, you, uh, and you give the right amount too, you uh you get a uh you get a you're guaranteeing yourself a blessing there isn't really not much that's guaranteed in the world other than uh you know perhaps you know dying one day uh some people say taxes but i don't think that's necessarily true so there's a lot of really wealthy people that avoid paying taxes uh but nonetheless there is a uh, uh not much guarantee in the world of money people that are rich today don't necessarily have a promise that they'll be rich tomorrow they don't even have a promise that they'll be alive tomorrow but when a person gives for the sake of Torah, they are in essence taking. They're taking themselves an a, 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 a insurance policy that they're going to have something, something when they uh, when Hashem looks at their account and sees do they have merits or not. So a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Ve'ikhuli truma. Now, another thing that uh, we learned from here is that uh, there is different types of givers. There are different types of givers that uh that exist in the world and uh we know that there is a uh, uh the giver that's called uh, uh that's symbolized here symbolized here of different types of givers first and foremost akadosh Baruch Hu says i don't want everybody to give i only want the people that are their heart motivates them to give as he says here uh take for me a portion from every man whose heart motivates him shall you take my portions meaning when a person gives many times people give but they give with conditions i'm going to donate x amount of money if you give me a blessing if you put my name on the shul if you uh you know show me a lot of respect every time i see you if you uh stand up when i see you if you uh tell everybody that i gave and and, and they in essence you know they give but they're giving as a transaction as a business transaction it's not really giving for the sake of giving and that's unfortunately a very bad way to give HaKadosh Baruch Hu says when you're giving for my Torah when you're giving for my Mishkan from your giving for to be a partners with me give only what you have a serious motivation in your heart to give give only something that you're seriously you know you want to give this don't be one of these people just oh yeah here's twenty dollars okay if twenty dollars a lot of money to you then yeah of course give it but if you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars and you're giving twenty dollars don't think that this is something that's going to uh uh, uh be uh, viewed as a good thing there are many people the uh, chafetz chaim says that there are many people that will actually get punished and this is mentioned in the uh by uh, his talmid muvak rav elchanan wasserman and is a uh ikvita de meshicha where he says that there's going to be many people that are going to get punished at the time uh, before Mashiach. And he says that the people that will be punished the most severely are the wealthy people. The wealthy people that did not give enough for the sake of Torah, Shem Ishmo. You know, talking about pe- right now, uh, you know, people have an enormous amount of money, an enormous amount of money. All types of people have made money over the last 10 or 15 years where you have people that had no concept of investing all of a sudden became you know billionaires they put ten thousand twenty thousand dollars in some idea that their friend told them about and just wanted to speculate and ended up being bitcoin and that ten thousand dollars could literally be worth a billion dollars right now and you have other people that uh you know got into a business at the right place at the right time and a kadosh Baruch Hu decided to bless this business and the business went from being a mom and pop shop to being a conglomerate that has offices in almost every state and they're bringing in literally millions of dollars every single month 
then you have certain people that started all types of uh uh, uh you know uh, uh networks on youtube or on uh, uh tiktok and instagram and all of these social networks where they actually made a business out of it they have subscribers they have donors they have all types of things and literally people made millions and millions of dollars from all types of uh ideas that have developed that have uh, into the world over the last decade actually especially in the last five or six years an enormous amount of money has been made by a lot of different types of people both young and old people that are, were in the uh, software and the development business some of them made a fortune by developing the, the fun, foundation of something and then selling the business for 100 200 500 million dollars to a google or a facebook or one of those company where to that big company it's literally not even a reportable transaction you know it's it's such for them they they've they have grown so much they've become trillion dollar companies that they don't even have to report that they bought this hundred million dollar company and two three four years later when they develop it to be something significant they could pretend as if they created it out of nothing but the point is for that person that developed that idea that sold it for a hundred or two hundred million dollars or even a billion dollars that was a life changer for them and a lot of that has happened over the last several years and of course everyone knows that the market is closer to its peak than it is to its bottom and uh meaning closer to the end of the bubble than it is to the uh uh, uh to a uh, higher level but nonetheless there is a lot of people that have been given a big fortune but have not taken that to heart meaning they have not really thought about who is the one that gave all of this to me and do i owe something do I owe something because Hashem gave me this responsibility? When a Kadosh Baruch Hu gives you money, He's not giving you money because He wants you to buy 14 cars. Even if you like cars, you could only drive one at a time. He didn't buy, give you all this money so you could buy 15 houses. Even though He wants you to enjoy the world, there's no need for you to own so many houses. You can't go to more than one bathroom at a time. You can't sleep in one, one, more than one bed at a time. You're allowed to enjoy life. You're allowed to have good time. But when people make their whole life into uh, something that's materialism, where it's one vacation after another, one stake after another, and they start getting to a point where they forget that anybody else in the world exists, that they actually have been given a responsibility to help those that are in need, especially those that are in need in the Torah world, whether it's the Torah institutions themselves or it's the Avrechim. And many times people don't give or they give to the wrong places or they don't give enough you know he gives he got a billion dollars and he figures that he is good because everyone gives him respect because he donated a million dollars i'm sorry to tell you you gave a million dollars you're going to get punished for it you're not going to get rewarded for that million dollars why because according to what you have you were supposed to give a whole lot more than that add another a few zeros to that that's how much you were supposed to give when you have that kind of money and that's why it's a very very confusing world where you see certain times people get so much respect for the little bit that they give because the perspective of people is that this is a lot but of course Akadosh Baruch Hu has his own calculations so what Akadosh Baruch Hu in essence is telling us here in the beginning of the parasha is that a person is going to invest in the Torah make sure that your heart is what's motivating you what does it mean your heart is motivating you you're really into it you're not just writing a check and uh, thinking oh okay i just wrote this okay go go let me just you know move on with my life no i want you in it i don't need your money i want you in it i want you to be involved i want you to give because you thought about it you thought about the significance of it just like before you're going to invest and buy 10 50 100 million dollar business you're going to do all the due diligence you have to before you give that $10 million, that $1 million, that uh, $5,000. Make sure you do the calculations. Ah, listen, I'm going to invest here. I'm going to put this money here, and this is going to grow for me. I have an assurance it's going to grow for me because this is going to help people do tshuva. This is going to help people. Do. Get involved in your spiritual investments. Put your heart into it. But unfortunately, Rabotai Karim, Kadosh Baruch Hu also tells us that there are different types of givers. This is the portion that you shall take from them. Gold, silver, and copper. Those are the first three uh, uh, things that a Kadosh Baruch Hu says that they should give. But then, of course, there's other things. But uh, the Chachamim teach us, and the first time I heard this, I heard this from Rabbi Ephraim, that uh, there are different types of givers. This uh, gold, uh, silver, and copper is, is, 
actually uh, symbolic of the three different types of givers. Gold is uh, in Hebrew spelled Zav. Zav is Zayin He Vet. And it's an acronym for Zean Oten Bari. That uh, this person that's a gold uh, giver, this guy is a, he's the best type of giver. Why? He's healthy, everything is good, and he, and he wants to give anyway. Why? Because he really put his heart into it. He cares about the cause. He cares about Torah. He cares about the future. And he gives, not because he's expecting anything in return. He gives for the sake of giving. That's a golden giver. That's the best type of giver. I have a few of those people that I know, and not many. Literally, less than a handful. Less than a handful. We have tens of thousands, Baruch Hashem, tens of thousands of people that watch our shiurim, and Baruch Hashem, thousands of them, you know, give and, and help us and, and, and uh, help us do a lot of the things that we do. But there's a, a few of them that are unique. Why are they unique? Because it's not just about that they give a significant amount of what they make, but they don't ever have to be asked. They don't even need a reminder. They simply make it part of their life that I need to give. I need to give for the sake of Torah. And it's amazing to, to, to see these people really put themselves out there and invest into the Torah because they know this is the right thing to do and they're not expecting anything in return. Of course, everyone would love to have blessings and success and so on and so forth, but the golden giver is not doing it for that. The golden giver is doing it because he knows it's Hashem gave me, that's, he gave me a responsibility with that gift he gave me a responsibility so that's the golden giver then there's the kesef the, the silver kesef is uh silver it also it also means money that's also an acronym that's also an acronym that uh kesef is a acronym where it says when he sees danger he opens meaning a person had had money all along and he would give you know he'd signed up for uh, he makes 15,000 20,000 50,000 a month but he signed up you know to give 50 bucks a month or, or something that's not really appropriate or he doesn't give it all but the moment he sees the uh the tables turn he sees that some of investments went down all of a sudden his investment portfolio drops by 40 percent in a week all of a sudden he feels pain on his uh, on his side and the doctor says we have to check you this is very serious stop everything that you're doing you can't go to work for a week until we get a uh, real diagnosis of why this pain he gets a scare and then he says oh rabbi listen aren't you building a kolel or yeshiva or, or something you're still working right rabbi i haven't talked to you in a while listen uh where could i wire five thousand dollars oh wow Baruch Hashem, thank you very much but the reality is He's not the ideal giver. It's good that he's giving. It's good that he's getting the sign that, okay, Kadosh Baruch is giving you this pain because he's trying to get your attention, but it's not ideal like the golden giver that already gave before anything happened. This guy saw some pain. As soon as he saw some pain, okay, okay, let me write a check. God, save me before he goes, gets too late. Save me before he gets too late. So this is the Kesef. The third one is Nechoshet. Nechoshet is copper. Nechoshet is a acronym, Netinat Chole Sheomer Tnu. This is an acronym for, this is the gift of the sick who says give, give already. This is a person that already got sick. He's already sick. He already lost a lot. And he's pretty much at a point where he's like, has lost hope. And he says, you know what, whatever, listen. I can't take the money with me anyway. I'm dying just just give the rabbi a hundred dollars give the rabbi five thousand give give just whatever just give something and meaning is one of those hopeless uh last uh, uh uh you know will and testament type of uh gift where uh you know it's like in the uh the elf of the lot in a uh game of football i used to play when i was a uh in high school you know, anytime you have a, a close game, but uh, you only have a few seconds left of the game, what do they typically do? They throw what's called a Hail Mary. They throw a, a ball all the way in the, in the sky, hoping that the team catches it, you know, and uh, and scores. You know, this is pretty much the, uh, the last chance. We'll give it uh, whatever we can, and whatever happens, happens. This is unfortunately typical to the uh, Nechoshet, the, the, uh, the copper giver. 
that uh, gives, but really when it's almost too late. Too late would be after you already died, but it's almost too late. Where, you know, it's a, uh, it's not, uh, to say the least, it's not a, uh, a person that's the ideal giver. And the question is, how does a person get to uh, understand, you know, what's, you know, how to be this ideal giver? First and foremost, we should always be, be reminded. Etz chayim ile machazikim ba v'tomchea meushal. The etz chayim, the the tree of life, okay, uh, is is given to those that support it. Meaning that uh, that blessing is given to those people that invest in Torah, that invest into Kiruv, that invest into Hakadosh Baruch Hu uh, in, in his business, in essence. That people that want to be partners with Hashem, those are the people that have the biggest uh, blessing in their life. Those are the people that will end up being the most praiseworthy. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to give food to his creation with or without us. And when a person invests, he shows Hashem that he knows what his responsibility is in his world. On the other hand, a person needs to know that with or without you giving, it's not going to uh, change your, your income for that year. Why? Because... HaKadosh Baruch Hu already decided how much income you're going to make on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, you decide how much money you're going to make. From Rosh Hashanah until Rosh Hashanah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides you're going to make, let's say, $100,000. Okay, so you're going to make $100,000, almost $10,000 a month. Now, you decide, I want to give $10,000. So the Gemara says, oh, if you do, you're going to give $10,000 for the sake of Torah, that $10,000 is not included in that income. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu pays for the mitzvot. Meaning, whatever a person uses for the sake of mitzvot, whether it is donating money to feed the poor, or for the sake of Torah, or for the sake of a mitzvah, for Shabbat, for Yom Tov, and so on, that's not part of the income. That's not part of the income. In essence, you're putting Hashem on the spot where He has to find a way to give you an extra 10000 this year because that's what you gave. And the higher the level of the Amunah, the more a person gives. The more a person gives. So now, when a person is the golden type of giver, that type of person is already taking the, uh, uh, making commitments ahead of time. Making commitments uh, uh, ahead of time, where he's already giving, she's already giving, before she even sees the blessing. And I've seen with my own eyes, I've seen with my own eyes people that do this, and again, like I said, there's only a few that I know that have done this and I've seen the blessings, the miracles in front of my eyes of what happens. Because a certain person decided to, uh, to give, not only to give, but to give a substantial amount and to uh, give without necessarily know who, what, when, and how. And the amount of blessings this person had over the next few years, they themselves say, I'm surprised that Hashem is paying me. Is this okay? Am I getting a reward in this world? I say, listen, Hashem gives you a gift, say thank you. Why would anybody be concerned about uh, Hashem rewarding them? If a person is truly righteous and they know that Hashem is giving them a lot, they have to check, is this really uh, what I want? Is this not what I want? Arab Shpadron, Arab Shalom, he used to have uh, some very famous stories that he would give. And is a, uh, uh, one of the famous stories that he, uh, that he said, which I, the first time I heard it was from Rabbi Fai many years ago, was a story about uh, Rabbi Yonatan Aibishitz when he was very young. Rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz, Alava Shalom, was a uh, uh, Kodesh Kodeshim, and when he was young and just newly married in those days, when someone was already uh, recognized as a uh, true scholar, uh, all of the wealthy people, all of the wealthy Jews would want the, uh, their daughters to marry this scholar because it was uh, honored to have somebody like that in the family. And uh, in order to entice the scholar to marry their daughter, they would promise them a uh, substantial amount of money and give them a substantial amount of money so they could continue focusing just on learning Torah and not have to worry about any money. So such was the case with Rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz. They recognized him as a diamond uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's as rare as can be. And uh, one of the uh, wealthy families saw and uh, the father said, listen, I'll, you will marry my daughter. She's a good girl. You meet her. If everything works out, you guys want to marry each other. I'm going to give you 300 gold coins. Okay. Uh, 3,000. 3,000 gold coins. 3,000 uh, is a lot of money, substantial amount of money. 
and uh, of course everything else was good she was a modest tzadika everything was great and on top of it I'm going to be able to study Baruch Hashem of course the Gemara in Masechet Sota says in the beginning of the tractate says that a person gets a, uh, a spouse based on his actions if he is righteous he gets a modest woman if he's wicked he gets a putza he gets an immodest woman so of course Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit's got a, a tzadika not only was she uh, coming from a wealthy family but she was also a very very serious tzadika which you'll see from this story so uh the um Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit's married this uh this woman this tzadika and uh continued his learning now at the time they uh they had this uh bet midrash where rabbi yonatan abishit would learn with a uh with his chavruta and his chavruta was one of these really kanaim these these zealous people that uh really fought for the truth and sometimes uh pushed the envelope a little too far especially when it came to idolatry one day these uh these uh, christians that of course tried to do everything possible to destroy judaism in every way shape or form came into town and decided that they're going to build a church right out right next door to the synagogue like as if there's no other place on earth that they can build their place of idolatry they have to build it right across the street from the synagogue from the bet midrash that rabbi Yonatan Ibishit and his and his friend are learning so of course nobody liked it but the Chavruta, Rabbi Yaakov, when he saw that he just couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand it. every day. They would see it out of the window. They would hear the bells. He says, one day I'm going to take revenge against them. Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit would try to calm his friend down, but nothing, nothing really prevailed. He hated it with a passion. And really, this is one of the things that the Gemara in Masechet Abu Dazara says that you're supposed to hate idolatry. But he hated it with a passion, even more than a norm. Now, one day, he couldn't take it anymore, and he decided to take matters into his own hands. And he broke into this chavuta, Rabbi Yaakov, decided to break into the church. Went into the church, saw their huge, disgusting idolatry across with a yoshke hanging on it their god is hanging on there like a shish kebab and he decided to start breaking it as soon as he broke it it created a big noise and he started going back you know to, to leave but there was commotion the uh pastors that were uh, living inside there ran outside to see what the commotion is saw the jew chased him caught him and beat him senseless beat him senseless and put him into one of the rooms he wasn't allowed to uh to leave until they had a uh, judgment of what to do with him the next morning when rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz came to learn Torah he saw that his chavruta wasn't there he wasn't too concerned he figured he's busy doesn't feel well okay but the second day when he saw his friend is not there he started getting concerned asked around and no one has seen him no one has seen him meanwhile the church had their meeting and decided that they're gonna burn Rabbi Yaakov alive in the middle of the market on a specific date for desecrating their idol such was the life in those days simply the church took matters that the law into their hands and decided decreed a death penalty on a jew imagine living in such a time so rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz saw all of this that his friend is missing and started praying to hashem please help us all of a sudden there is knock on the door rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz opens and he says yeah and he sees that there is a uh pastor the uh that works in the next door place can i help you he says listen your uh, friend yaakov he he's with us and if you want to see him alive i'm the only one that can help you 
because in the next couple of days, they're going to burn him alive in the middle of the market for what he did. Now, Rabbi Yonatan Ibeshit is there with a few other people in the Bet Midrash. They hear this horrible news. And he says, okay, what do you want? He says, I want 3,000 gold coins, which is an enormous amount of money. Enormous amount of money. And he said, listen, get it, you have your friend. You don't get it, your friend's going to be burned. You have until tomorrow to give it to me because after that will be too late. Of course, everybody discussed, I mean, there's a big mitzvah, uh, you know, pidon shvuim, to say, to, to, to release a prisoner, to save a Jew's life. It's a very big deal. So everybody went, let's try to get whatever we can get. Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit thought to himself, it's a big mitzvah. It's a big mitzvah that I can do here. But the same token, it's taking all of the money that I got from my father-in-law and, and giving it. It's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if uh, my wife is going to agree to this. Our lives are going to change. He couldn't take it. He said, I have to do it. He got, went into the safe, got all of the money that they had, the whole 3,000. Went to the uh, pastor and said, here you go. He said, how'd you get the money so fast? Rabbi Yonatan Abishit told them, I had this money, I got it as a gift for my father-in-law, and this is all I have. The pastor couldn't believe it. He says, that's what you would do? You're giving your friend everything you have? He says, yeah. A Jew is worth a lot more. The pastor was so impressed with Rabbi Yonatan. He says, I've never seen such integrity, such real love. Never seen anything like this. And he parted ways with him. After giving him Rabbi Yaakov. And he told him, if you want him to stay alive, he has to leave the city forever. Never come back. Of course, Rabbi Yaakov fled the city to save his life. And Rabbi Yonatan knew he has to go back home. Okay, he did a big mitzvah, Baruch Hashem. But... He has to go back home. But he already planned ahead. He said, listen, my wife, once my wife hears this, I don't know what she's going to say, so I already tell her that I have to leave for a few days. So I have a few days that I can pretend like I'm somewhere else, but in reality, he's going to be in the Bet Midrash, thinking about uh, what to say, how to say it. Maybe Hashem will open up his mind and give him something good to say to give her the, uh, a way to justify it. And while he's in the Bet Midrash, his friends come, and they say, well, Rav, we have a, uh, we got, uh, we got some money. We got some money. And he said, oh, okay, but you don't need to. You can keep it for yourself. Well, what do you mean? I already gave it to them. And he told them the whole story. I gave everything he had. And he said, oh, okay, great that you did it. But we want the mitzvah also. We worked hard to go get money from people. We want the mitzvah also. So at least let us buy half the, half the uh, mitzvah. We'll give you 1500 You'll get half. We get half. Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit says to them, you think I'm going to sell my mitzvah? You think I'm going to sell my mitzvah? I can't sell my mitzvah. It's my mitzvah. I need my mitzvah. It's my mitzvah. I can't. No, no amount of money in the world is worth this mitzvah. I just got a mitzvah to save a Jewish life. You want me to sell that mitzvah? I can't sell a mitzvah. After back and forth, back and forth, it was decided, that, no, no selling. He's not selling the mitzvah. Rabbi Yonatan was still a young man, a genius, a tzaddik. And very zealous about keeping his mitzvah. So, a few days passed. And one day, the pastor comes to the house of Rabbi Yonatan Ibishitz. Of course, Rabbi Yonatan is not there. And uh, he tells the, uh, his wife, he's like, listen, I have to give you something. Me, something? Who are you? Oh, I'm the pastor of this. Okay, why? What do you want? He gives up a whole boatload of money. Everything he has. He says, what, what, do you, what do you want me to do with this? He says, listen, the church that I'm part of, they're on to me that I'm the one that freed your husband's friend. And I overheard them talking that they're going to kill me. So I have to run. But I can't carry this with me, all this money that I collected over the years. And the only person in the world that I can trust is your husband. She says, what do you know about my husband? 
He says, your husband is the most honest, sincere, loving person I have ever met. He gave all of his money, all of your money, to save his friend. All 3,000 gold coins he gave. And that's part of it also. And all of the money that I collected. Over the years, all of it is here. And I know that your husband is such an honest and good person that if I am able to survive this and I come back, I know he's going to give it back to me. But if I die, it's all yours. She says, okay. So he fleed. Several hours later, people found his body under the, under the uh, bridge. They caught him. They killed him. The, uh, the Christians killed him. And uh, his wife, the Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit's wife, realizes how much of a tzaddik her husband is and how HaKadosh Baruch rewarded him. Later that day, Rabbi Yonatan Ibishit comes home and he has been trying to figure out what is he going to say to his wife to convince her not to divorce him, to convince her that he's not crazy, to convince her that it was really the right thing to do. And he gets into the house expecting that by now she probably realizes that all of the money is gone. And he comes in and he sees his wife happy, playing with all types of jewelry. And she goes, hey, my tzaddik husband, I'm so proud of you. Abiyonatan is looking, what? Me? You're proud of me? She goes, you're such a tzaddik. I'm a tzaddik. She goes, yeah, you're the biggest tzaddik in the world, she says. I know what you did. I know that you gave all of what we have to save a Jew, to save your chavruta. And I agree with you, you did the right thing. And not only that, Akadosh Baruch Hu agrees with you and look at what he gave you. And she tells him the whole story of what happened with the pastor and how he gave her and then he, his body was found and he died. He got murdered by the Christians. Abiyonatan Ibishitz looks at all this money and starts crying hysterically. He starts crying uncontrollably and his wife doesn't understand why is her husband crying. Why is he crying? Why are you crying? Yonatan says, Akadosh Baruch Hu rejected my mitzvah, he rejected my tzedakah, he doesn't want it, because he gave it back to me, threw it in my face, whatever reward I was supposed to get. You don't get reward in this world, you get reward in the next world. Akadosh Baruch Hu gave me everything that I gave, plus a lot more in my face in this world, which means he doesn't want my mitzvah. And he cried hysterically until he fell asleep. And that night, that night he got a message in a dream that he was right. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was not happy with him. He said, you did good by giving, but you were supposed to share that mitzvah. Other people need to also give. You can't just take the entire mitzvah to yourself. That's why everything was given back to him. Now, Rabbi Karim, this is the reason why Rabbi Kadosh, Rabbi Yudan Asi, he was extraordinarily wealthy, had hundreds of horses and properties, and was like a king from the Rabban Gamliel family, one of the descendants of David Melech. He was extraordinarily wealthy, but yet he would ask his rich friends to give tzedaka, not because he needed their help, because he knew they needed it. They need the merits. They need the merits. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us that whatever motivates us, whatever motivates us to give tzedakah should be the right motivation. It should not be something because we're expecting to get something in return in this world, because we want a certain amount of respect, because we want this, because we want that, simply because we want, to want Hashem to use us as a vessel to spread His word in the world. That's what we want. The parasha continues. Parasha continues talking about the Mishkan, talking about all of the extraordinary things that Akadosh Baruch Hu put in this Mishkan, and we see that Akadosh Baruch Hu does certain things at certain times that we can learn from. For example, the uh, when he tells us the details of how 
this mishkan was made and all the material that was made we see that the uh the cover for the mishkan was made from the skin of a tachash tachash was a uh, deer-like bull-like am- animal it was a combination of the two it was a decent you know very big animal but it was an extraordinarily beautiful animal the most beautiful animal that existed and it was their its skin was like a rainbow something out of this world perhaps that's where the uh uh the uh, the the people got uh, their uh you know their stories of the unicorn something similar to that but it didn't have wings obviously either way this tachash was an extraordinarily beautiful animal and the uh, chachamim ask was this animal always there why is it mentioned here who what went rashi says this was a creation for its time meaning that this tachash was not created in genesis this was one of the later creations there was a few creations that akadosh Baruch Hu made after the original creation because generally speaking everything else was created in, in bereshit in the beginning of the world this animal was created at mount sinai and existed at that time when its skin was needed for the sake of the mishkan the bet mikdash but as soon as there was no longer a need for it that's it it became extinct and there was no because there's no reason for it but this again is a uh, uh symbolic for us to sh- to see and understand clearly how a kadosh Baruch Hu manages his world where he shows us clearly that he has no limitation he plays with this world very similar to how when uh, our kids play putty he can do whatever he wants as the pasuk says Ayad Hashem is, is Hashem's hand short is there anything that Hashem can't do this is important for each and every one of us to know when we are giving when we are doing because many times people are concerned that if I'm going to give this this much then I'm not going to have if I do this much then I'm not going to this this is a mistake when you make Torah your priority in life and you say listen no matter what I'm going to learn my hour or two in the morning I'm going to learn my hour or two or more at night which if that means I'm going to have to work less then let it mean I'm going to work less why because if when I work for Hashem when I serve Hashem and I learn Torah I know for sure that although it may not be easy although there is going to be some tests I know that this is certainly the right decision this is certainly the right decision and I will not lose as a result of it Hashem is not going to punish me for learning Torah same concept when a person decides to make a uh, commitment to donate at least 10 to 20 percent of their income for the sake of Torah every time they get a check they donate why because a person naturally in their rational mind will think wait if I'm going to give this uh this money then that means that uh I'm you know I have to live off of 90 percent I have to live off of 80 percent and 80 percent is not always enough maybe my business is going to go down maybe my competition will this maybe that maybe this don't ask any of those questions when it comes to Hashem don't ask any of those don't do calculations with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. why Ayad Hashem is Hashem not capable of doing something there's no such thing as getting punished for doing the right thing for you know according to Hashem so when a person makes that commitment makes that leap of faith jumps into the water like Nachshon ben Aminada he jumps into the water sacrifices himself she sacrifices herself for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. there's no doubt that that you know that that person will end up on top at some point may not happen right away may not happen for some time only a who knows the calculations but for sure you will benefit and see that that was the right decision and many times when people have the ability to do good that yet comes to them and reminds them of how bad it used to be or how bad it can be and maybe you shouldn't do and all types of calculations get involved and they end up either not doing as much or not doing at all and this unfortunately is a uh is, is a mistake that's made often uh and uh many times people will end up donating to the wrong entity just because of a uh, tax benefit let's say or because of a social benefit where they know that this torah institution is the best one it's the one that helped them it's the one that saved them it's the one that did everything but they're gonna donate to somewhere else because it's uh uh, perhaps it's more famous or perhaps it's a uh, local so therefore there's 
tax benefits and so on so a person can make such a judgment like that and think oh but i'm still giving it to torah it's still a good thing wrong it's not just about giving it to an institution it's about giving it to the right one it's not just about giving it's about making sure you have a kadosh Hu as the reason why you're giving and not the uh, uh your own personal benefits if you end up getting certain benefits whether it be taxes or or social or whatever other benefits that you're getting as a result of it no problem it's not a sin to get benefits but when a person makes their giving a uh, uh something that they're already uh, expecting to receive from it something material then it's not really giving it's more like business it's more like business so Kadosh Baruch Hu says if I want to make a new creation just for you then I'll make a new creation just for you if I didn't make a new creation just for you that means I don't want to make a new creation just for you if I want to make a miracle then I'll make a miracle if I don't want to make a miracle I won't make a miracle don't ask me to make a miracle focus on what you're supposed to do and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will decide what's best for you and that's one of the things that we have to remind ourselves on a regular basis because many times we feel like we can do more if Hashem gave us more but the truth be told is that this is somewhat of a heretical thought why is it somewhat of a heretical thought because if Hashem knew that you can do more with more wouldn't he already give you more meaning that if he's not giving you more that's because he wants what you have now he wants you to learn as much as you can now based on your schedule now he wants you to do as much as you can based on what you can do now not based on oh if you have uh different circumstances and that's what happens a lot of times is that people live in illusion where they say listen it's okay for me to do almost nothing because i'm waiting for hashem to open the gates for me and then i'll do a lot i'll give a lot once i have a lot but now that i don't have a lot i'm not going to give anything it's a mistake it's a mistake a kadosh baruch Hu wants a heart what does it mean he wants a heart he wants us to do the best we possibly can with whatever we can and he will decide if he wants to change the circumstances for us or not and this of course is relevant to our learning torah it's relevant to how we manage our marriage how we respect our spouses how we raise our kids how we give tzedaka where do we give tzedaka all of these different things have a connection and of course we can continue going on into every single page in this parasha but i see that we've already gone to a point where it's almost an hour uh and uh, i uh, i know that you guys have uh, some questions okay Rabotai Karim, thank you very much for uh, learning torah with me akadosh baruch Hu. bless each and every single one of you to uh, get closer and closer to akadosh baruch Hu, to serve hashem at the highest possible level to help klal israel and the rest of the world do tshuva shlema including all of the enemies of god all of the enemies of the torah for them Bezot Hashem, to all do tshuva for all of klal Yisrael to do tshuva to serve a kadosh baruch Hu, because at the end of the day that's all we want we want the world to serve a kadosh baruch Hu. we want a, the world to 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 praise a kadosh baruch Hu. we want the world to love a kadosh baruch Hu, to fear a kadosh baruch Hu, to do what a kadosh baruch Hu has commanded us to do because that's the whole purpose of the world that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world because doing all of that is for our own good not for his he's already perfect but serving him honoring him fearing him loving him it's for our own good so to do all he wants us to do for uh, in essence in serving him is in essence giving ourselves the best gift we could possibly give Baruch Adonai Le'olam Amen Ve'Amen
מברך את הרבנים, רגע, 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 אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שהם מסיימים שאלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה. הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם לטובה ולברכה. שבכל מה שיפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו. יזכו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה. הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן. אז אם בזמן שם רשת בכל הארץ, הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה. איפה הוא גר? בפלורידה. פלורידה. איפה זה פלורידה? באמריקה. באמריקה. במיאמי. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית. קהילה ספרדית גדולה.